Today we have Nate Horner, the Minister of Agriculture, Forestry, and Rural Economic Development, here today to talk to us about the Agri Recovery Plan. And so thank you so much for being with us today, Nate. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Yeah, no, appreciate it. For those unaware, what is the agri-recovery program? Uh, I guess at a high level, uh, the agri-recovery program is, is part of the uh, business risk management suite of programs that, uh, that we run in partnership with the federal government. So uh, within the BRM suite, there's ag, ag invest, uh, ag insurance, uh, ag, agri-recovery. And the agri-recovery is... Uh, is important because it's it's kind of the ad hoc disaster program, so it uh, it's it's usually a, a program that uh, you you trigger uh, after the disasters happened, and uh, you work with the federal government to try to get hands in, in money in the hands of the affected producers, whether it's it's drought or flood or, or some other uh, uninsurable consequence. And would one of those uninsurable consequences be the new influx of avian influenza that has been going across Canada? Uh, potentially. So the way the way that works when uh, when you have animals that are ordered to be uh, you know depopulated in this case, like the, with the avian influenza, that's the jurisdiction of, of CFIA, Canada Food Inspection Agency. So right now, if I'm a if I'm a producer. That um, that's been infect, uh, uh, at an infected premises, and CFI came in and, and had to depopulate my birds. They would at first be compensated through CFIA for those birds. They'd also be paid, um, you know, a disposal uh, disposal fee, and be paid for cleaning and disinfecting of their premises. Um, Potentially, this could be an ag recovery situation, um, and those discussions are being had with the feds. Uh, but at this time, uh, those mechanisms within CFIA are handling the response. You mentioned one of the things that agri recovery covers was drought, and especially in Alberta last year, especially in the southern parts of Alberta, there was a lot of people that had problems with drought. And so, kind of talk about what processes you guys had to go through last year, especially in covering so many people who had to deal with drought and lack of feed. Well, last year was a unique circumstance just because there was so little feed available and there was concern uh, because of uh, some of our neighbors to the south and some of the northern states. Um, there were subsidies, both federal and within their states that were, were helping them procure feed. So there was a lot of feed that was moving from the north of the border into the United States. So there was a, a lot of panic, uh, just a, a shortage of feed. Uh, a rapidly increasing price and uh, and Albertans and, and Saskatchewan farmers watching some of that feed uh, go into the U.S. So it seemed like a, a, a dire dire situation that was a little different than the most uh, drought scenarios and the fact that um, you know it, it went well beyond one province it was it was basically the entire uh, prairie provinces and, and most of the the northwestern U.S. Um, it was it was a, a different deal than than just a, a, a drought in, in the Palliser Triangle, for example. It was uh, it was something bigger. Moisture wise, we're looking to be quite a bit better throughout most of Alberta this year. But is there any potential problems if another drought were to happen this year for agri recovery and for producers as a whole? Well, it, it potentially, you know, I, I think the agri recovery, that's why it's so important. It's, it's already built and designed and it's basically sitting on a shelf where you can pull it down and begin the conversation uh, with, with the feds or vice versa. Um, so that, that's important that it can respond in that way, but it, 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 doesn't, uh, it doesn't proactively uh, respond. It does come in after the situation is, is deemed to be that dire. Um, so it's very important. I think you're right. The, what, what we've seen is that the, the, the really hard hit area is getting smaller uh, within the province, which is, which is great to see. Um, but there is some areas, especially in the in the far southeast, that are are still uh, very concerning. So we're watching those areas closely. Um, there was actually uh, some rain rain move through that region today, so that's that's great to see. So we're watching the cir circle get smaller, and uh, and we're we're hopeful that uh, that 2022 treats us a little better. And so you mentioned how agri recovery is kind of mostly meant for after a disaster has happened. 
is there any, because of that, is there any deadlines that people have to meet or can they kind of apply for it year round ish? No, it's not something that an individual can apply for. It's something that uh, the provinces, uh, one or many, need to enact and trigger with the feds. So, you know, last year, uh, last summer, you know, a lot of our, our industry groups did a lot of heavy lifting on the livestock side. We saw the Alberta beef producers and the cattle feeders uh, really, really mobilized. And that was across multiple provinces uh, to get the provincial government uh, well-informed and, uh, and working on their behalf to initiate the program. Uh, so it's, it, it can start kind of at the, at the grassroots level, but you do need the, the actual provinces to go ahead and, and, um, initiate the deal with the feds, uh, because every situation is different, you know, uh, it would be a different amount of money and going to different people for different, uh, criteria. So it's, it's very, fairly fluid that way. Thank you so much for being with us today, Nate, and um, have yourself a great rest of your day. Thank you very much, Thomas. Thanks for the opportunity.